Oh, Joyce, you could never understand just by watching these little films how uh, long an afternoon it is. We've been so spectacular uh, pressing, at the end, pressing at the end of January from these guys. We've had about 300 questions and now we're in the final couple of furlongs and we've got Steve Lacey who uh, joined us last year and is now a regular fixture. I love you to bits, mate. <laughs> My happiest day of last year was at Basel Mulhouse Airport and I got a phone call from him saying, can I come to a light speed quiz? And I thought, Nobody ever rings me up asking me that, so uh, he's here and he's been a regular. Uh, so, uh, welcome Steve, uh, yeah. your first set of questions, and the subject is? Uh, it's the Beatles, uh, you've basically got 55 questions, of which 55 answers have got some link, however tenuous sometimes, to the Beatles. Unless of course you might, we've got one answer related to 55 questions. But if everybody's in agreement, I'm happy to move that question down the list when we know what it is. We'll take it off. But, uh, can I, can yeah, I, can I, yeah, could I ask Mike Lee, what's your default answer today, Mike? Yeah, you tell us, I can move it down. Uh, it is a Rocky Horror Picture Show. For the Beatles. Okay, right, the Beatles. okay. Good luck with that. All right, let's see. Let's go. Okay. 55 questions. Okay, question one. This fictional character made her first appearance in a comic strip in August 1966 and the following year made her animated debut in a TV special. She has freckles and auburn hair. Norman Wilson. Betty Boo. No. This one. She has freckles and auburn hair. Oh, Tony! Sorry. Jennifer Freckles. No. She was mentioned in the Let's go. She has freckles and auburn hair and generally displays the characteristics of a tomboy and is usually seen wearing... Michael. Annie? No. Well, Simon. Peppermint Patty. Peppermint Patty, yeah. Simon, a, you're in the lead. Look at that screen. She has a crush on the main character, uniquely refers to as Chuck, George Harrison's first wife, Patty Boyd. Steve. Question two. You will find one of these on the East Falkland Islands called Pony Pass, around five miles southwest of Port Stanley. It's the title of the final book, posthumously published by Scottish author Ian Banks. It was also the name of a short-lived 2016 Cinemax TV series. Mike. Have we watched that? No. Uh, That's it. Well, got carry on. Short-lived 2016 Cinemax TV series set in 1972, featuring a returning Vietnam vet, offered the job of a hitman by a character called The Broker, played by Peter Mullen. The most Google question about this is what happens here. The second most Google question about this is, is it safe to swim there? What is this large deep pit from which stone or other materials have been extracted? Lee? Quarry. Quarry? Yeah. Quarry man. Oh. Very good. I am a captain. Question three. Uh, what did the late Bob Monkhouse once refer to as another name for a marriage license? In reality, it's used to enable you to access various forms of transport or fairground attractions. Sam. Ticket to ride. Ticket to ride. Uh, yes. Uh, question four. Uh, this man often produced controversial works which challenged ideas on what was an appropriate subject matter for public artworks. Some of his major pieces include a bust of Joseph Conrad, a bronze head of Albert Einstein, and the tomb of Oscar Wilde in Paris. It's Simon. Epstein. Yep. Check your Epstein. Well, manager Brian Epstein. Uh, question five. This film was summarised by the American film critic Roger Ebert as follows. A frothing mad film that thrashes against its very sprocket holes in an attempt to bash its brains out against the projector. It seems designed to punish the audience for buying tickets. It is a thriller without thrills, constructed in the meaningless jumble of flashbacks, flash forwards and subtitles and mottos and messages and scenes that deconstruct and reconstruct and self-destruct. I wanted to signal the projectionist to put a gun to it. The plot? What plot? What is the name of this 2005 film directed by Guy Ritchie? Starring Jay's... Mike? That's not. It has. Clevian. Uh, tell me. Revolver. It is Revolver. Jason Statham as a gambler. Affirmative. Question six. Uh, what might you shout uh, should you be in your kitchen making breakfast whilst carrying the items from your refrigerator to the cooker you inadvertently drop your box of eggs scattering yellow residue all over the kitchen floor? Ashton. I am the Eggman. <laughs> Colin. Yoko. Close enough, yeah. Yoko, no. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. 
<laughs> That's a spin. Hey, listen, yeah. Dave Bill. It's a few of those. Yeah. Uh, questions. You've been that one, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, it wasn't it. Yeah. Question seven. Uh, what was the USA's first modern stadium built entirely of reinforced concrete? Ashton. Shane. No. Oh, I was going for the green button. Uh, Sam. Sam. Sam? Yankee. I, I was going to say Shane. No. Stupid woman. Michael. Candlestick Park. Correct. Oh, yeah. yeah. Originally built to house the New York Giants who had mm -hmm. moved there, uh, and the Beatles played their last concert at Candlestick Park. Bingo. Number eight. Uh, you can find one of these uh, three miles away from where I live in Northamptonshire, just outside the Star Inn in the village of Gennington. You can find another one 25 miles away from where I live in Hardingstone, Northampton. Go low. Yes. <laughs> no, but you've got it. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Two of the only three remaining, although remnants of the lost nine can still be seen. Yeah, Queen Anne and Crosses. Uh, question 9 uh, Freesat channel 159 Sky channel 155 Virgin Media channel 245 Freeview channel 19 are where you will find Mike Quest huh? Quest No Clebian Lee Yesterday <laughs> Yesterday oh. Fully ah. the ah. history ah. channel <laughs> Joint leader Lee with Sabbath uh, question 10. Launched in 2014 and currently available for use in 15 countries and available in apps for Android, iOS and Windows Phone, what is the name of the international calling app for smartphones that utilises dedicated phone circuits for making calls? It uses local phone networks instead of the user's smartphone's internet connection to connect calls, thus the receiver is not required to download the app to receive the call. Go on. No? No. I'll go for it. Okay, yeah. It's called Ringo. Oh, we're, all, we're all waiting for a long green with Ringo there, I think. There you go. Uh, question 11. Uh, name required. Having previously held cabinet positions of Minister of Education, Minister of Employment and Minister for Social Inclusion, and being Deputy Prime Minister and Leader of the Labour Party, this person, between December 2007 and June 2010, served as the 27th... It's Michael. Gordon Brown? No, afraid not. Wrong. Uh, this person served as the 27th and the only woman to date to hold the position of Prime Minister of... Steve Rhodes. Harriet Hamm. No. Lee? Oh, it's, it's, that's a neg as well, isn't it? Yeah, afraid so. Lee Hoff. Lee. Andrew Beckett. No. Idiot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, served as the 27th and the only woman to date to hold the position Prime Minister of Australia. Colin. Julia Gillard. Julia Gillard, yeah. Bill. Album track and Lennon's mother, Julia. Uh, question 12. Uh, if, like both myself, uh, Chris Curtis, Vince, and likely a few others, you'd attended the Light Speed quiz number nine last year in September at Church Fenton. Uh, your sat now would have got you close to the venue, only to be met by closure and diversion signs, thus sending you away in a completely different route, consisting of a meandering circuitous course around the Yorkshire countryside to get to the final destination, which could also could be described as a what? Ashton. Helter Skelter. No. <laughs> Good try, Michael. <laughs> Fast. <laughs> Tony. Magical mystery Tony. No. Ooh. Another good guess, Colin. Right. Uh, um. Simon. A triple. Steve Rose. Long and winding road. Long and winding road. Ah. Spot on. Question thirteen. Uh, a limited edition of one of these was created in 2018 to celebrate 50 years of the product. Launched in 1967, soon after the launch of the company's first creation, whose initial commercial target was boys only. This left a vast market niche that was rapidly filled by the development of this product. A more feminine looking product was designed in mind for girls. It was originally pitched sorry, it was originally pitched at the female market, with the original packaging having a prominent image of Lady Penelope and her chauffeur Parker on the wrapper. The brand's connection with the Thunderbird It's Colin. Fab. Yep, yeah, Fab Ice Lolly. Yeah. Uh, uh, Miles in the lead, Colin. Have you got a charge of Michael? 
Keep going. Yeah. Uh, question 14. Thanks. Uh, full name required. Defeating the Democratic incumbent, Grover Cleveland, which American politician and... Michael. Boy? Benjamin Harrison. Benjamin Harrison. Yeah. Bingo. Grandson of the ninth president. Super knowledge there. <laughs> was. Uh, question 15. Uh, this term was first recorded in... Sorry, that's me. This term was first recorded in the UK in 1905 at the Hull Fair, taking its name from the much older adverb, meaning in confused, disorderly haste. Are the record... Wow, uh, Colin. Not a scout. That is not a scout. Yeah, also Colin. called... I, I'm not sure, but that may have been a hatchet you just had as well. What's that? No, I don't. Oh, yeah, you did. Sorry about that. I said may. Uh, question 16. Uh, this US state is the 19th largest state in area, but the fourth smallest state by population. Admitted to the Union on November the 2nd, 1889, its state nicknames include the Flicky Tail State, the Rough Riders. Not Wilson. So, the Court, South the Court. No. Minus one, Norman, I'm afraid. Uh, Wherever you are. Really? Tony? No. North Carolina. No. No. Go on. Yep. Include the Flicky Tail State, the Rough Rider State, and the Peace Garden State. Colin. Arizona. No. Uh, have you finished? Have you? No. Not oh, finished, right, no. Colin. Wrong. Uh, Sam? Uh, Marino. No. I, 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 just, I do know what okay. that is. Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stupid women. Okay. Go on. Its largest city is Fargo. Oh. Ah, Lee. Yeah, South Dakota. We've said South Dakota already, uh, sorry. Uh, have you finished? No. <gasps> Ashton. North Dakota. Yeah. It's North Dakota. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Should have got ages ago. Yeah. 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 Lenin's Dakota did building. You, we said did this you, you definitely yeah. I thought it was right. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think Question 17. Uh, if I can take you back to question 6 for a second, where we had a mishap in the kitchen, you'd be pleased to know, over a drop box of eggs. You managed to clear up all the yolk, pick out all the eggshells, and decide to fry what's left, leaving you with what? Ashley. This is WIM the Eggman. There's no song. No. The song was that in the Eggman. It didn't have to be a song. It's <laughs> not quite finished. Incorrect. Am it? Scrambled eggs. Right? No. Oh, good good guess. Good Sam? That was my answer. Uh, hey, where are you, Sam? Yeah, oh, wait, I I the no, not quite. Oh, no, not quite. Norman? Scrambled eggs. No, and I thought he was right. Simon? Oh, I thought scrambled eggs was right. Oh, yeah, it should be. Let's all get our points. Get it up! Uh, you pick up all the eggshells, decide to fry what's left, leaving you with what for breakfast? I've got it. you got it. I think so. White albumen. White albumen. Oh. <laughs> oh. Very good. Let me just have another look at the next few questions. Apologise for that. Best question so far, I thought. Yeah. Fair enough. Sorry, but yes, yeah. Okay. Uh, without looking, at NB. Best known full ring name required. This man started wrestling in 1977 in Tennessee and formed a tag team in 1979, with whom he appeared in 1986 in the opening credits to the film Highlander. In 1987, he recorded an album then retired in 2001, now works with the WWE as the head of the road agents oh. and producers. Whoa, Michael. Michael Hayes. Prompt. Michael P.S. Hayes. Yeah, the P.S. Hayes. You have to be on his character, purely sexy. Purely sexy. Or P.S. I love you, B-side of Beatles, yeah. Question 19. This company was created in 1991 and has been described as one of the most successful mass market celebrity brands. Available in the UK as well as Ireland, Australia, South Africa, and New Zealand, it is a British food brand specialising in vegetarian and vegan food. Ash, then. Linda McCartney. Linda McCartney. Yes. Absolutely. Food. Welcome to the, the game. Uh, question 20. Ranked 18th in the world for livability in 2016 and with a population of around 1.8 million, which is the eighth largest city in the EU as well as the Union's largest city? Ash, then. Hamburg? It's Hamburg, which is not one of the member states' capital Absolutely. cities. Absolutely. Yeah, early success in Hamburg. Uh, question 21. 
Uh, what TV show debuted on the 6th of January 2012 on Sky One, ran for 58 episodes over six series and two specials? The series was largely filmed in Ferndale in the Ronde Valley, though it's set in the fictional village of Ponterbury in the South Wales Valleys. Produced by... Mike! No. That's right, isn't it? Idiot, really. <laughs> I hope we've got a bad one here. Plebeian. Plebeian, that'll do. Is that Michael? Michael? Stella. It is Stella, yeah. Stella McCarthy. Oh, Bingo. Uh, question 22. What's we'll the call it, Michael? Uh, this singer songwriter was born in the UK, though can claim American citizenship from his mother's side. One of his songs was re recorded by Cher for her album Closer to the Truth. He co-wrote the song Beautiful by Enrique Iglesias and Kylie Minogue. Michael! Mark one? No. Oh. Wrong. And the Olly Murs number one single, Heart Skips a Beat. One of his songs also featured in the 2007 film Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. As a lead singer with his group, he achieved four top ten singles in the 2000s. However, he will probably always be best remembered for a 2007 edition of Nevermind the Buscocks. Mike uh, Tony. What's his name? Oh, can't Ten, nine, no, no, out. <laughs> Ashton. It's his Preston. Ashton. You've got. Uh, Samuel Preston. You've got eight points for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Billy Preston, another <laughs> another claim to be a fifth beat of Billy Preston. Uh, Twenty-three. Uh, you may have seen uh, the following news story from 2013 uh, that following a tragic airplane crash in San Francisco, a summer intern acting outside the scope of his authority was allegedly responsible for supplying erroneous information about the flight to local TV station KTVU Channel 2. During a live broadcast, the station wrongly reported names of the flight crew. Uh, the station reacted quickly by issuing an apology, but not before the story had been picked up by the LA Times, New York Times and CNN. The names reported as having been on this Asiana Airlines flight crew included Way Too Low, Holy Fuck, Bang Ding Ow, and which captain's name? The anglicised meaning of this word in the Cambridge English Dictionary is described as an object, situation, or action that is not exactly known or specified. Uh, Simon? Captain Cockup. <laughs> no. Captain Simon? Mystery. Uh, uh, go on then, press. Go on then. Nowhere, man. No. Oh! Hmm? No one boy. No. <laughs> no, got it. Yeah. Uh, something one. Oh. Something. Something. Okay. Uh, uh, are you uh, lit up there, Stevie? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go. Okay, question 24. Uh, painted in 1964, this is perhaps the artist's most well-known artwork. It was painted as a self-portrait and consists of a man in an overcoat and bowler hat standing in front of... Mike. What's it called now? I haven't got it. I don't know what it is. Clevian. Sap. Sort of that. That's not what I'm... No. Oh, look. Stupid. Tell me. Magritte. No. Consists of a man in an overcoat and bowler hat standing in front of a low wall beyond which are the sea and the cloudy sky. The Son of Man by the Belgian surrealist painter René Magritte has the man's face in the painting obscured by what? Oh. <laughs> ah! See what you did there? <laughs> like, who, 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 who? Is this you, Aston? I can tell this. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Ashton, you're in the lead of that tough buzz. Obviously, that was the Mike Lee's school of swerve. That was. Right, excellent. Uh, question 25. I'm so glad to get the hang of this. Absolutely. Yeah, just swerve around. Yeah. Uh, in 2017, which woman became the oldest person to become Dame Commander of the Order of the British Michael! Empire? Olivia de Havilland. Is Olivia de Havilland? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Livia Harrison, George's wife. Uh, they have always crop up in every special quiz, yeah. don't they? Uh, question 26. Compounds of this metal have low toxicity compared to those of most of the heavy metals as they are poorly absorbed by the human body when digested. This metal can be found in group 11, period 5 or row 5 of the periodic table. This metal exhibits, exhibits the highest electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity... Michael! Silver? 
It is silver, yeah. Also links Marvel yeah. characters Norin, Rad and Pietro Maximoff, yeah. Silver Beetles. Uh, uh, yeah, all Maximoff Silver Hammer, yeah. Uh, question 27. May 2010 won with a majority of 4,000 in nine. Right. Yep. Uh, May 2010 won with a majority of 4,091 votes. June 15 won with a majority of 23,015 votes. Simon. Jeremy Corbyn. No. Huh. Uh, December 16 lost by 1,872 votes. Lee. Nick Clegg. No. Uh, Idiot. Uh, June, <laughs> June 17 won with a majority of 45 votes. Who is this man whose ex-wife is now in a relationship with the Oscar-winning film director of Gravity and Roma, Alfonso Coran? She goes by the name of Shehrazi Ventura. He was denounced by critics in 20... Mike. Sarkozy. Sarkozy? No. Clevia. Uh, Michael? Imran Khan? No. Uh, he was denounced no. by critics in 2016 for dog whistle politics and being divisive by attempting to link his political opponent to extremists. Who is this MP for Richmond Park? It's, uh, Ashton. Goldsmith. Yep, is that Goldsmith? Absolutely. Zach Starkey lost the mayoral contest to Sadiq Khan. Uh, question 28. Is that uh, whose man's work comprised of 24 operas, 11 full orchestral works, 10 choral works and oratorios, two ballets, one song cycle, incidental music to several plays, more than 70 hymns and anthems, over 80 songs and parlour ballads, and a body of carols, piano and chamber pieces? Sure. Nope. Stupid woman. Uh, the son of a military bandsman, he became a soloist in a boys' choir. And in 1866, he composed the one-act opera *Cox and Box*, still widely performed. Uh, Tony. Uh, Sullivan. Oh, Sullivan. Yeah. Appearance on the Ed Sullivan show. Uh. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> question 29. Uh, this golfer turned professional in 1976, securing 31 professional wins, including one major, the U.S. Masters, in 1982. Michael. Lyle. Oh, no, okay. Rob. Ashton. Tom Kite? Yeah. No. Oh, Good no, guess. no! That's terrible, look! Correct. Good guess. What was it? Uh, Travis? No, that's the one. I was thinking Tom Kite, so it's Bill Rogers. No. English Open. Uh, Steve Rhodes? Larry Mays. No. Oh, another, yeah, I mean, 80s Kite. single win. Uh, Steve Rhodes. Lee Horse. Lee. He also played in the US Ryder Cup teams of 1983 and 1985. Due to his portly build and ample moustache, mm -hmm. what is the American golfer Craig Stadler's nickname? Yep. So who got it? Tony? He's not got it yet. I pressed it. Yeah? Thomas? Yeah, Walrus. I said that halfway through. Affirmative. connection. A lot of editing going to go on that bit. He knows all the stuff. Stop at 30 or? <laughs> One more. One more. P question 30. You were pleased to know. Cast your mind back to question 17. You're back in the kitchen. Not the yeah, arse again. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is you finished your breakfast. Have a what might you shout at the sound of approaching footsteps from outside should you be eagerly anticipating the arrival of your daily Dan Market tabloid newspaper? Colin. Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. Oh, no. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Question 31. Okay, 31. Character name required. In 1976, President Gerald Ford rescheduled a press conference in order not to miss an episode of his favourite TV show featuring this character. The show became the first successful hour long drama series in American primetime history to feature a woman in the starring role. The show ran for four seasons between 1974 and 1978 and can be classed as a police procedural drama. Winning. Tony. Uh, Pepper Anderson. Yeah, Sergeant Pepper Anderson. Wow. Oh. Affirmative. Help make Angie Dickinson a household name as policewoman. Uh, question 32. This man served 
for the third longest time amongst UK Prime Ministers and held the seat of Rye for 13 years. He was a son of a close advisor to George III. And throughout his... Turn it. Is Lord Liverpool? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's that? So rearrange that when the new Peter Lewis being there. Uh, question 33. Uh, the urban dictionary meanings for what term include the name of a duke joint, an informal establishment featuring music, dancing, gambling and drinking, primarily operated by... Mike. The Penny Arcade. <laughs> 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 uh, and drinking, primarily operated by African Americans. Steve Rhodes. No. Oh, no. Simon. Casper. No. Moran. Uh, primarily operated by African Americans in the southeastern USA. It is also the prison term used to describe the action that happens from the smell when you approach an inmate's cell. It is also the term for when a gang member gets shot and his homies retaliate by shooting a rival gang member in return. Michael. Driper. Uh, Sam? Get back. Does it get back? Yeah, get back. Oh. Yes. Um, question 34. God, Sam, you've pressed a lot of times today. Yeah. Uh, despite protestations by TV's Barry Simmons on the Eggheads programme that this Northamptonshire man, bo uh, sorry, this Northamptonshire born man's resting place should be elsewhere, following a ceremony on the 26th of March 20. Simon. That's the cathedral. Yeah. Uh, oh, this Good. man's was interred in his rightful final Where resting place in where? In which city cathedral? Leicester. Yeah. What was the Richard III? I don't know what's the Beatles. Richard Leicester directed the first two Beatles oh, films. Oh, Richard Starkey. Yeah. I mean, get pressing, will you, mate? Everybody else, <laughs> <laughs> they're not all right. Uh, You've got to crack a few eggs. Yeah, that's it. Have you got uh, any more about that kind of thing with Tom? We'll see. We'll see. Question 35. There's dancing behind movie scenes. Behind the movie scenes, Sadi Rani. Wow, Ashton. It's a brimful of Asher. Brimful of Asher, yeah. Leicester Band Corner Shop. McCartney's fiance, Jane Asher. Oh, wow. Absolutely. You're in the lead on your own on 11, Ashton. And funny enough, question 36 to keep Ashton even more happy. Still on Leicester. Um, which man is a fellow Leicester City supporter, born in the city in 1946? Between 1979 and 1986, he worked as a TV critic for first The New Statesman, then The Observer. He has written crime fiction under the pseudonym Dan Kavanagh, which is his wife's surname. His first novel... It's Ashton. Julian Barnes. It's Julian Barnes. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Julian Lennon. Absolutely. Oh, goodness. Uh, I thought you'd give me five minutes. Uh, question 37. Should you be one of those people who enjoy watching The Great British Bake Off and were a fan of Mary Berry in particular, but were disappointed in the change of personnel in March 17, how might, how might you start to compose your letter of complaint? Colin. Dear Prudence. Dear Prudence. Ah. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Um, uh, question 38. This man won gold for Great Britain at the World Championships in 2005 and 2008. In between times, he'd won the silver medal at the 2006 Commonwealth Games, although not for Great Britain. In 2011, he was not only awarded an MBE, but won the 2011 BBC Sports Personality of the Year Award. Steve Rose. Mark it's Mark Cavendish. Yeah. Scott Cabin Club. What? It's <laughs> <laughs> only a bit tenuous. <laughs> what was the connection? Cavendish. Cabin Club. Uh, question 39. Uh, this expression that is still used by the British Parliament today was first used by John Hampden in 1689. It refers to what has been seen as the last successful invasion of England the previous year. After consolidating political and financial support, William of Orange landed in Torbay. Michael. Glorious Revolution. Glorious yeah. Revolution. Yeah. Bingo. Revolution, B-side. Uh, question 40. Uh, full name required. This man considered running for the US Senate in 1994 in Virginia, but opted out of opposing the Republican nominee, Oliver North. Between 2010 and 2016, he served as president and chancellor of Baylor University in Waco, Texas, but the board ended his tenure after his mishandling of the investigation of several allegations of assault there. Earlier in 1998, he had shared the Time Magazine Person of the Year Award. He has previously worked under President George W. Bush, and the new Supreme Court Justice, Brett Kavanaugh, has worked under him. In August 94, he was appointed as independent. Steve Rhodes. Dan Quayle. No. Colin. 
Kenneth Starr. He's Kenneth Starr, yeah. Investigated yeah. President Clinton's relationship with Monica Lewinsky. Lee uh, Question 41. Uh, full character name required. Uh, this character has frequent public arguments with his wife. One such argument took place when an attempt at a threesome with his wife and a man named Seth didn't work out. As Seth said, the photo he saw wasn't representative of them as a couple. The character is played by the actor Adrian Scarborough, who together with his wife, played by actress Julia Davis, is a close friend of Pam and Mick in the BBC sitcom Gavin and Stacey. Written by James Corden and... Sir. Sutcliffe. Pete. Peter Sutcliffe, yeah. See, Stuart Sutcliffe, late Beatle. What was it brought Gavin and Stacey. Gavin and Stacey. Ah, had it, Scarborough. Here's yeah. there, yeah. Uh, Question 42, uh, what might you shout, should you wish to attract the attention of the British actors to play Marvell or Walter Lawson in the fourth? I mean, hey Jude. Hey Jude, yeah, Jude Law, the Captain Marvel. Uh, question 43, uh, what was the name of the hyperbolic radio navigation system which allowed ships and aircraft to determine their position by receiving radio signals from fixed navigational beacons? Uh, the system was invented in the US, but development was carried out by the company that gave it its name, first deployed by the Royal Navy during World War II. Marco? Sona? No. Uh, after the war, it was extensively developed around the UK and many areas around the world. Its primary use was for ship navigation in coastal waters. Fishing vessels were major post-war users, but it was also used on aircraft. It was deployed extensively in the North Sea and used by helicopters operating to oil platforms. It continued operations into the 90s, but the system was shut down in 2000 and being replaced by GPS. Decker Navigator, I'm having Decker. two points for that. Yeah. <laughs> Label, turn down the Beatles, famously. No, that, yeah, but what's the thing? What's Decker. Decker? Decker? It's called Decker. Yeah. Uh, question 44. Whose three volumes of memoirs are entitled Going to Sea in a Sieve, Going Off... Oh, Colin. Danny Baker. Danny Baker, yeah. George's you son, Danny. Leap above Aston now. You're on 15, Aston's on. Danny. Uh, 13. Uh, uh, question 45. Uh, I know I was party to a bit of a debate a few weeks ago when Stephen Ashton had a difference about whether people should give uh, warnings before questions. I think you were for and he was against. I'm going to be kind to you. Good man. So question 45, not a, Talk motor by the yeah. <laughs> not a motorway. Not an A road. Simon? The A? Finished, yeah. It's not a B side. Colin? Let it be. No. Shall I repeat the question? Or yeah, go be not, go, not a motorway. Finished, not a motorway, go. not an A road. Oh, yeah. it's a B road. A B road. Yeah. A B road. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm going to hit it. It's a B road. For five years, I've treasured <laughs> this kind of ambition to become not the most <laughs> unpopular man in the Question 46. Uh, first established in 1937. Part of this location was requisitioned by the Royal Navy during World War II and named HMS Gabwar. It continued to be used for military purposes until the 1970s, including use by the fleet air arm, is it? Ashton. Wolfkintar? No. Oh, see so where you're going with that. Incorrect. Uh, used by the fleet air arm as a naval aircraft storage unit until 1983, when it was opened to commercial purposes. Following major capital investment, the company it shares the site with sold it for 35 million to the Spanish company Ferrovial, who resold it to ABN for 132 million in 2008. Prior to that, in 2006, it was announced to some controversy it was going to be renamed in honour of a sportsman from that country. What's the name of this airport? Ashran Schreiman. George Best Airport. George Best Airport, oh. yeah. As in Pete Best? Pete. <sighs> well, wicked. Uh, question 47. Uh, Southern Society Girl Skeeter returns from college with dreams of being a writer in a small Mississippi town in the 1960s. She upsets the town by choosing to interview black women who have spent their lives taking care of prominent white families. Only Abelene, the housekeeper of Abelene's best... Help. The help? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Hall. Lee Hall. Yeah. Uh, 
Yes. I don't know who wrote it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Question 48. Uh, the following uh, all comes from a newspaper article in February 2018. It was reported that sales and supplies had completely run out in the midst of a cold wave. A powerful stream of cold air from Siberia was hitting the country and could give the coldest late winter days in 60 years. We are calling trying to find out from suppliers what is going on, but the status is that everything's empty, said the co-op manager. So far, we've already sold 40% more this season than in the whole of last winter. Something has changed in recent years in that people buy all of it in the autumn, so they're set up for the winter. In Hordal, people seem to need it all the time. And Hegstat at the co-op said... Call it! Norwegian Wood. Norwegian Wood, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tron, Fjord, off and Oslo said there'd been insane orders from Bergen. What was it? It was so short supply. Norwegian Wood. Number 49 coming up. Yep. 55 uh, altogether, Collins has got 17, Ashland has got 12. Uh, this does reference back to Dave Bill actually. Uh, apologies for my accent here, but in the Urban Dictionary, if you actually look at Scarbados, it says, let's take caravan to Scarbados and don't forget to pies. Uh, but the characters Lord Foppington and Sir Tumbelly Clumsy both feature in the play A Trip to Scarborough, the fourth play written by this Irish playwright. Ashton. Um. No. Incorrect. Michael. Yeah. Samuel Beckett. No. Wrong. Okay. Other plays by this man include St. Patrick's Day, The School for Scandal, and The Rivals. Um, Johnson. No. You finished question? Yep. Oh, Norman Wilson. Sheridan. Sheridan. It's Sheridan, yeah. Tony Sheridan, yeah. Previous singer, Tony Sheridan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Question 50. Uh, this politician has served in several cabinet positions, Minister for the Environment, Minister for Agriculture and Fisheries, and Foreign Minister. He helped to organise the 1992 Winter Olympics, together with former skier Jean-Claude Killy. Who is this French politician? Well, French, French politician. <laughs> yeah, a French politician. Uh, well, yeah. Who is okay. this French politician who on the 27th of July 2016 was announced as the European Commission's chief negotiator with the UK. Steve oh, Roach! Lee! Michelle Barnier. Michelle Barnier. Yeah, Michelle. I like Captain. Uh, question 51. This Formula One driver began his career with the Tyrrell team. He subsequently drove the teams Zach Speed, Williams, Brabham, Benetton, Ligier, McLaren, and Jordan. He holds the dubious record of having the longest F1 career, 158 Grand Prix stars, without a race victory, a pole position, or fastest lap. At the 1984 Dallas Grand Prix... Michael! Martin Brundle. Is Martin Brundle? Yeah. Bingo. George Martin? No. Teammates include Schumacher and Senna? Yeah. Uh, question 52, four to go. Uh, the first mayor of this city was Jock McNiven and various local points are named after him. Niven Lake, McNiven Beach, and Niven Drive. In 1978, a Soviet nuclear-powered satellite, Cosmos 954, crashed to Earth near the city. Birch and spruce trees are abundant here. After the mining industry waned, the city shifted to a centre of government services. Diamonds were discovered to the north of the city in 1991. In recent years, tourism, transport, and communications have emerged as significant industries. Five languages are spoken in significant numbers here, including the dog rib language, where the city is known as Sombake, meaning where the money is. Population of the city is around 20,000, and the late actress Margot Kidder, who played Lois Lane in Superman films, was born here. Daylight hours range from five hours in December to 20 hours in June. Average July temperature is 17 degrees, January's is minus 26. The city hosted the inaugural Arctic Winter Games in 1970. Norman Wilson. Hamilton. No. Really? Michael. Michael. Yellow armor. No. Though it lost. Oh. Wrong. Steve Rhodes. White horse. White no. horse. Though. Lee. Uh, Lee. Yellow knife. Yellow knife. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> so <laughs> close. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like lost some standing when none of it was split from the Northwest Territories. Uh, it's three to go. Uh, question 53, what is defined in the Cambridge Easy Dictionary? Sorry. Sorry about that. Question 50, uh, what is defined in the Cambridge English Dictionary as a short journey, especially with a group of other people, to visit place... Michael? No. 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 Oh, I'm so unlucky. 
wrong. Steve Rhodes. Let's just take him out. I was going for a day trip. No. Leave off. Ashton. Has it mystery tour? Yeah, mystery tour. Visit places that are kept Ashton. secret from you no. until you get there. Uh, two to go. Two to go, yeah. Ashton, you need them both. Uh, is that, is that? I do have to apologise, I think I have to apologise for this TV question. Got to apologise for the lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I wasn't sure if it was one of Michael's many that he'd been on. So just so you all know, that's any rider. Uh, in case I've given him an unfair advantage. But uh, this TV show launched on the 25th of July 2016 and has run for four seasons. One person is eliminated in each round of the show to leave two in the final. In the first episode of the first series, women's private parts outnumbered men's penises by a ratio of two to one. What? I mean. Naked Attraction. Naked Attraction, yeah. Uh, 2003 album, Let It Be Naked. Okay, it's not one you've been on. Yeah, I got picked up. He uh, turned down all the burns. Last question, 55. Uh, single name required. Last name of a political dissident. First name. Mike. Penny. No. No. First name. Mind of age. <laughs> first name of a rugby league player. Last name of a detective. First name of a film director. Last name of a poet. First name. Michael. Hillary. No. Hillary Queen. Hillary Queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, first name of an actress. Wrong. Last name of an illustrator. First name of an in-betweener. Last name. I mean. Blake. Is Blake. Last name of a bus inspector and name of a classical vocal group. Hey, and they turned it, it looks like an easy like? win when it's written down there, 1713. Colin, Daffin, on top of, yeah, if you've been so watching the Q12, right. you've known Colin won his Q12, the first one. That's and what a great that's comeback that's for you, mate. Give Colin another round of applause. <laughs> hey, speaking about Q12 and live speed quiz and the specials we do, the special thing I want to, I mean, apart from just enjoying and it's going to be some great films here. And I hope you're enjoying watching them if you're watching on the YouTube. And I hope you, you know, feel free to come on down. I've got to say that, you know, if you could pick a superlative for this set of questions, it's probably the set I'd most like to pick up and have a read through because this bloke, he's only been coming to Lightspeed Quiz for six months and he has dropped straight into where I want him to be with these questions. Can we have a big round of applause for Steve and the Melbourne?